I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a problem on orbitals. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, I'm a professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the author of the Death Destroyer and Orgo Man books. I'd like to go over a little problem with you on orbitals, atomic orbitals and molecular orbitals for the DAT exam. The DAT is not going to really go that difficult into orbitals. You're going to be dentists and oral surgeons. And I don't think you can need to be into quantum mechanics and stuff like that. So I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible and show you exactly what you need to know. So come around and let's have a quick look. Now, when I draw a hydrogen atom, we're going to look at the area of space where we can find an electron. And I'm going to call that a little circle. So we're going to put two hydrogen atoms together. Now, an electron can also be thought of as a wave. So if you see me draw a plus sign, think of that as a wave that moves upward, and a negative would mean a wave going down. If you took two waves going up, they would combine with one another. So what we like to do in organic chemistry, instead of drawing a wave or writing any mathematical equation, we can simply draw two circles. And as you can see, the two circles combine with each other. That would be the equivalent of two waves. And as you can see, these two waves meet each other. So a plus just means the wave is moving up. Now, there's another possibility. And that possibility would be that a wave moves up and one wave moves down. And as you can see, that's depicted on this diagram here. One wave is going up and one wave is moving down. When the waves combine and the orbitals combine, we call this a bonding molecular orbital. If they don't combine, we call this an anti-bonding molecular orbital. And this area right here where there's no probability to find an electron is called a node. Now, in addition to doing bonding molecular orbitals and anti-bonding molecular orbitals with, with hydrogen, we can also do it with other elements, namely carbon. So if you can see here where I have a p orbital, but notice a p orbital is sidewise. It's not going to be parallel. Now, this type of orbital, again, you're going to have a wave going up, and the white can mean going down. When the two waves meet each other, which I'm going to use different colors now, when the two same colors meet each other, that's what we call a bonding molecular orbital overlap. And that's what we call constructive overlap. Notice whenever you form this type of a situation, we call this a sigma bonding molecular orbital. Notice that the electron density is centered along the line connecting the two atoms. And therefore, we can say it's cylindrically symmetrical. And that's what we call our sigma bonding orbital, meaning the waves have combined together constructively. But from this point on, I'm not going to talk about waves. We'll talk them in these um, pictures. In this picture now, you can see that the colors don't match each other. So that means the waves are out of phase, and this is a destructive overlap. And as you can see, this is what it would look like, and we get a node. And this would be what we call an antibonding molecular orbital. Once again, you can also have um, a sigma bond between not only, say, p orbitals, but you can have or s orbitals, but between s and a p. So here, the two colors meet, and we would form a sigma bonding molecular orbital. Here they don't meet, and there's our node, and we would get sigma star antibonding molecular orbital. Let's go to the other board, and let's look at another type of possibility. Instead of the orbitals overlapping, in a sidewise fashion, they can now be parallel. And as you can see, if they're parallel, you would get what's called a pi bond. And here, the orbitals are out of phase, and we would get what's called the pi star or antibonding orbitals. Now, the bottom line is this. Whenever you form 
a single, a double, or a triple bond, we're going to form these things called sigma bonds. So all bonds contain a sigma. A pi bond is formed if you have a double or a triple bond. So for example, if I wanted to look at the pi bonds, and we're just going to look at the carbons. Between here and here, you have two things. You have one sigma bond, so you can almost think of this. That one bond represents the sigma, and the other bond represents the pi bond. And as you can see how I put it together, and you can figure out the anti-binding orbitals are out in space, which we don't need to get involved in. So usually, for our purposes, we are looking mainly at the sigma and the pi bond. We're now looking at the anti-binding. So as you can see, let's do a harder one. If you now have something like this, between the carbons, we have one sigma bond, and because it's a triple bond, there's two pi bonds. So there's the sigma bond, as usual, so that could represent the sigma, and then there's two pi bonds. Notice they're aligned with the same colors, and the other one is coming out at you in 90 degrees, perpendicular. We sometimes call this orthogonal. Let me do one more problem with you. So let me erase this. I'm going to do one more, and let's show you a type of question that can land in the DAT. What if I gave you something like this, and I said to you, I want you to tell me how many sigma and pi bonds. That's the most common question you're going to see on the deck. Well, every bond counts as one sigma. So it's one sigma, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You will get eight sigma, and a double bond, there's one pi bond. So it's one pi bond here, and two pi bonds here. So that would be a total of three pi bonds. I'll do one more. What if I gave you something like this? And I said to you, how many sigma and pi? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There would be ten sigma. This is a pi, and this is a pi, and that will give me two pi. That's the most commonly asked question I think you're going to see in the deck. I hope this gives you an idea of how to go about and understand sigma and pi bonding. If you go to our new issue of Destroyer, you'll see many, many new questions that I wrote on this. All right, I hope this helps. If you got any questions, hit me up on the study group. I dedicate this problem to Hussein, who wanted to see a problem involving sigma and pi bonding. Okay, good day to you. Bye-bye.